Hey everyone, welcome back to the fourth episode of Roblox Scripting Tutorials. In this episode, we're going to be looking at three ways to make a lava part. Now, there's a really simple way to make a lava part. You just put a script inside the part, you make it so that it kills any player that touches it, you get their humanoid and you set the health to zero. It's pretty straightforward and we'll be making that first as kind of a beginner section um, but after that I want to start using loops to go through multiple parts to make them all do the same function and then after that we're going to be using collection service which lets you group together parts with different tags and basically the purpose of this is it's going to make your life so much easier. If you have loads of lava parts and you want to convert them so they only deal half as much damage as before then with the original setup so you have a script inside every piece of lava you're gonna have to go through every one with the last two options it's way easier to mass change everything so if you want to change them all you only have to change one value and they all just work seamlessly so I really hope you enjoy the video it won't be long we're just gonna quickly go over a couple of examples and that should be it for today's video so I hope you enjoy if you do hit the like button and uh, let's get right into it Okay, so for the beginner's example, let's insert a script into the part. So first of all, I'm just going to write a quick function that runs whenever you touch the part. Okay, so I've got the function that gets the part whenever it's touched. Now let's check if it's an actual player by checking its character against the player's service. Okay, so to get the player, let's make a variable called player and we'll set it to game players get player from character part.parent, which will be the character whenever the player touches the part. So this value is going to turn into the player if a player exists and it's going to be nil if there is no player. So let's check if there's a player and then let's try and find their humanoid within their character. So a little side note here, I've used find first child of class and this is superior in this case because we're looking for a humanoid object inside the character. Now we could just do find first child humanoid and this will work 99% of the time but in that one scenario that the humanoid has actually changed names for some reason, it's super unlikely to happen but if it does, this find first child statement will return false, it won't be able to find anything called humanoid within the character. But if we use find first child of class, it will find any class of humanoid within the player and of course there's only going to be one humanoid even if it's named something else, so this is always going to work on every situation. So now let's check the human exists and then let's kill it by setting its health to zero. And there you go, we've written a simple lava script. So if I run the game now, when I touch the part, I should hopefully die. <laughs> uh, so if I touch this now, you'll see, there you go, my health has gone to zero, my character's obviously died there. So now that's great, uh, and we can copy and paste this as much as we'd like if we wanted to, you know, have loads of lavas all around the place. But if I wanted to make all of these if I had like hundreds of different lavas and I wanted to make all of them only deal me 50 damage rather than 100, how would I do it in this scenario? Well I'd have to go through every one of these scripts and I'd have to change each value to be 50 rather than 100. I'd have to set their health to be 50 or I'd have to take away 50 health depending on how much I wanted to do. So this is going to take ages if you're going to do it this way. So a better way to do it would be to add a folder into the workspace and loop through every one of the lavas and deal the same damage whenever any of them are touched. So let's get rid of all these scripts and we'll keep one inside the workspace. So let's call the folder lavas and now inside our script let's loop through all the children and for every piece of lava in here let's connect this function so that when any of them are touched it will do whatever's here it will damage the player and this will mean it's way easier to edit so let's do that real quick and there you go a really simple edit if I loop through every lava within workspace.lavas I get all the children and then for each one of these lavas I connect this function when it's touched then we should see that even though there's only one script controlling all of these whenever I touch any of them then I should lose all my health. And there you go. So that's really cool because now we've only got one script and this means we can do anything with it. So if instead I wanted to only 
make the humanoid take damage instead of instantly dying, then we can just set take damage 10, for example. So now you'll see, if I step on any of these lava parts, I'm just going to take a little bit of damage. I've taken about 50 there because I touched it 5 times. If I touch this one just a teeny bit, <laughs> ah, well you can see each lava part only damages you a little bit. So that's really good because we can edit it all from within one script. Now this is cool, but there's an easier way to do this all, by using collection service. Now if we use collection service, we can move this script within the server script service and it's a really simple edit from here. All we need to do is get the collection service and loop through everything that's got the tag lava. Now we haven't actually tagged anything yet, we'll do that in a second, but let's do the scripting first. So if we get collection service, just like that. And now if we loop through everything in collection service that has the tag lava. So now if we ran this, it's not going to do anything. None of the lavas are going to hurt us anymore. And that's because we haven't actually tagged them all to be lavas. So what I've done is I've downloaded this useful plugin here called Tag Editor. Uh, I don't remember who it's made by, but I'll leave the link for it in the description so you can get it as well. So now this is really easy to use. So you can see I've made a tag called lava part. That's really simple. You just add a new tag. So now I've called it lava part. So I've just quickly changed this to lava part. It doesn't matter what it's called. I just realized I'd already called it lava part. I didn't want to remake it so right so now we need to add all of these lavas to have the tag lava part so if i click onto a lava and i click lava part then it's just added it so if i do that for every one and then i go into settings within lava part and click tagged instances you can see there's seven instances here the script for some reason has also been tagged so <laughs> let's untag that one Okay, we've untagged the script, that was an accident, but you can see that we've tagged each one of these parts, they're all within the tag lava part. So now, with this script going through all of the lava parts, if we run the game, and then it's really simple, that should just do every piece of lava part in one go. Let's set the damage down to 1, just so it's more noticeable, because I can't touch it once, it's very difficult to do that. There you go, so you can see the lava is damaging me a little bit and that's because of that script, right? So we have the one script that's controlling all of these pieces of lava. There you go. So that's it for this video. I went quite quickly, I just wanted to go through the three different methods that I would use to make lava. Personally, I use the second method the most, I forget about collection service a lot of the time, but as long as you're using either of the last two, then it will save you a lot of time in the future if you want to change anything with the parts that you've placed beforehand. Now these kind of techniques shouldn't just be used with lava, it really should be for anything, so if you're making jump pads or tool givers, try and keep everything within one script with one function because it means it's super easy to change in the future and you'll really appreciate it when you don't have to go through a thousand different scripts or however many you've built up over you know a week, you'll have to change them all. So if you put everything into one central location, it'll be way easier to change it in 10 minutes instead of two hours. Anyway, that's it for the video. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you learned something new. If you want to learn more about collection service, I'll also leave a link for its wiki page below. Uh, I'll leave a link for this tag editor as well. If you're new around here, subscribe, like the video if you enjoyed and comment and let me know what you want to see next. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one.